You are watching The Story. Every Monday, we bring you a deep dive into the fascinating lives of incredible people. The true story of the Bilderberg Group. Welcome to Alux.com, the place where future billionaires come to get inspired. If you're not subscribed yet, you're missing out. Hello, Aluxers, and welcome to another original video brought to you by our team here at Alux.com. So what do you know about the Bilderberg Group? Probably not much, if anything, right? Anyone on the outside looking in will invariably have more questions than answers about this super secret group comprised of some of the most powerful and influential people in the world. Today, we're going to dig as deep as we can to tell you the true story of the Bilderberg Group. But first, let's get a general idea of what this group is all about. What is the Bilderberg Group? The Bilderberg Group is the unofficial name of the Bilderberg Meetings. It's also referred to as the Bilderberg Conference or Bilderberg Club. The Bilderberg Group convenes in a three-day forum once a year to address issues of common interest among representatives from the United States and European nations. What's more, the Bilderberg Group has been the source of a number of conspiracy theories and rumors due to the secretive nature of the meetings and the number of high-powered people who attend them. The Bilderberg meeting has been held for 65 years straight, with the exception of 1976, when the meeting was cancelled due to a scandal involving the leader, Prince Bernhard of the Netherlands. Meetings have been held in various locations in the participating countries, including the US, Turkey, Canada, Germany, Italy, and Switzerland, and are usually held in luxury hotels. Participants of these meetings spend three days discussing some of the major issues such as climate change, artificial intelligence, free trade, and the future of work. But let's now take a look back and see where Bilderberg Group got its start. The Beginning The origin of the Bilderberg Group can be traced back to Polish politician Józef Redinger. He advocated for an international conference to be held in order to promote better cooperation between European countries and the United States. He envisioned the US and Europe working closely together on economic, political, and defense issues that affected both regions. Redinger took this idea to Prince Bernhard of the Netherlands, who ran with it. He contacted the head of the CIA, Walter Bedell Smith, who passed the suggestion on to President Eisenhower's advisor, Charles Douglas Jackson. Jackson and Bernhard worked out the particulars, agreeing that two people from each participating nation, one liberal and one conservative, would be invited to attend the conference. Ultimately, 11 Americans and 50 delegates representing 11 countries in Western Europe agreed to attend, and these attendees represented the economic, social, political, and cultural sectors of their respective countries. Purpose the first conference was held at the Hotel de Bilderberg in Oosterbeek, Netherlands. It lasted from May 29th to the 31st in 1954. The Bilderberg website states the conference consisted of informal discussions to help create a better understanding of the complex forces and major trends affecting Western nations in the difficult post-war period. The initial goal of the group was to promote Atlanticism, or the strong relationship between the US and Europe, and prevent another world war. However, that goal has evolved over the years. Dennis Healery, one of the founding members and a 30-year participant, stated, To say we were striving for a one-world government is exaggerated, but not wholly unfair. Those of us in Bilderberg felt we couldn't go on forever fighting one another for nothing and killing people and rendering millions homeless, so we felt a single community throughout the world would be a good thing. But how exactly do they go about achieving this goal? Rules and Procedures the meetings follow the Chatham House Rules, a system that's been used since 1927 for debating controversial topics. Under these rules, any information or opinions presented in discussions could be taken from the meetings and used however the participants saw fit, but it could never be disclosed who said what or who was part of a particular discussion. This rule is meant to foster open debate. It's an attractive environment to speak freely and candidly without the fear of a controversial soundbite being played to death in the media or torn apart on social media. At the meetings, no resolutions are proposed, there are no formal action plans, no votes are taken, and no policy statements are issued. Any reporters that get anywhere near the conference are typically immediately arrested. The whole conference is shrouded in secrecy, and the privacy of those who attend is a very high priority. But what kind of people are on the guest list? Who attends? A steering committee comprised of two members from 18 participating nations meet twice a year to discuss the participant list and to plan out programs. 
Between 120 and 150 people attend the meeting each year, and about one-third of participants are from America, with the other two-thirds coming from Europe. Roughly one in three participants are politicians or government officials, and the others come from a wide range of sectors including finance, the media, academia, and industry. But of course, these people aren't just random, but are often the most successful in their fields. They are the heads of banks, board members of large companies, CEOs, and even heads of state. A list of participants for every meeting since 1954 is posted on the Bilderberg website in a rare move of transparency. However, one source connected to the group stated that others whose names are not listed tend to drop by to participate just for a day or two in the forum. Past participants have included Queen Beatrix of the Netherlands, King Juan Carlos of Spain and executives from IBM and AT&T, Bayer, Deutsche Bank, Fiat Chrysler and Google. Jeff Bezos, Bill Clinton, Gerald Ford, Margaret Thatcher, Bill Gates, and Prince Philip are all other well-known participants. Although they claim to have diverse representation, less than 25% of the participants are women, and as mentioned in a 2017 article in The Guardian, there were more senior executives in attendance from Goldman Sachs than people of color. But let's now look more specifically at the most recent meeting. The 2019 Meeting According to the available information, the 2019 meeting was held in Montreux, Switzerland at the Hotel Montreux Palace from May 30th to June 2nd. Notable participants included Audrey Ozule, the Director General of UNESCO, Jose Borroso, the Chairman of Goldman Sachs International, Jared Cohen, the CEO of Jigsaw, a subsidiary of Alphabet Inc., Reid Hoffman, co-founder of LinkedIn, Jared Kushner, son-in-law and senior advisor to President Trump, who was recently impeached, Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft, and the King of the Netherlands. The agenda of each meeting dating back to 1954 is also included on the Bilderberg website. Items on the 2019 agenda included a stable strategic order, what's next for Europe, climate change, China, Russia, Brexit, the future of capitalism, the ethics of artificial intelligence, the weaponization of social media, the importance of space, and cyber threats. The current chairman presiding over the group is Henri de Castries, a French businessman. And that's just about all the public information that's known about this meeting. And of course, the lack of information has led to plenty of rumors and speculations about the group. Conspiracy Theories Due to the secretive nature of the group, conspiracy theories have always been associated with Bilderberg since its founding. Most of these center on the intentions of the group. Those on the left side of the political spectrum accuse the group of working to impose capitalist domination, while those on the right suspect the group of conspiring to impose a one-world government and a planned economy. Former chairman of the group, Etienne Davignon, addressed this by saying, It's unavoidable and it doesn't matter. There will always be people who believe in conspiracies. If we were a secret government of the world, we should be bloody ashamed of ourselves. In addition to the more extreme conspiracy theories, there are many concerns connected with the geopolitical influence of such a powerful group. While an altruistic view is the group is working for the greater good, it's hardly conceivable that all of these influential leaders in their fields aren't considering their own interests in this setting. Lobbying is a major concern, as the number of the attendees are senior members of powerful lobbying groups. While the Bilderberg Group's official stance is that the conference has no desired outcome, you can bet that many of the participants have their own agendas on what they would like to accomplish at this convergence of what many consider to be the transnational elite. An article about Bilderberg in The Guardian put it like this, it's possible that Reid Hoffman, the head of LinkedIn, has turned up for the birthday cake, but I doubt it. This is big business, and big politics, and big lobbying. Closing The Bilderberg Group is a well-established institution that only seems to be gaining influence and significance. While the group continues to go to great lengths to maintain the secrecy of the conference, including spending hundreds of thousands of dollars on security, more and more people are demanding to know just what's going on behind those closed doors with all of those powerful people. For now, it'll largely remain a mystery. It seems we'll only know what they want us to know when they want us to know it, which doesn't look like anytime soon. And a lexers for a comprehensive account of the history and practices of the Bilderberg Group, check out The True Story of the Bilderberg Group. Author Daniel Estulin has worked relentlessly over the years to find out what goes on behind the closed doors of the conference, and what he divulges in this book is nothing short of fascinating. 
You can save yourself $25 by going to alux.com slash freebook. If it's your first time signing up, you'll get the audiobook version for free, thanks to our partnership with Audible. Question. Now that we're wrapping up this story, we'd like to know, Alexers, do you think the Bilderberg Group are primarily acting for the greater good or for their own self-interest? Let us know what you think in the comments. And of course, for sticking with us until the end, here's your bonus. Prince Bernhard was implicated in the Lockheed bribery scandal and admitted to accepting a $1.1 million bribe from the U.S. aerospace company so the Dutch government would buy their planes. The 1973 Bilderberg meeting was supposed to be held in the United States, but it was cancelled because of his involvement in the scandal, and he was then removed as chairman. Thank you for spending some time with us, Aluxers. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpicked these videos, which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question on our website, alux.com. Thank you for being an Aluxer, and we'll see you back tomorrow.